Look at me. Ten. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Lady Victoria here with Victoria School of Etiquette, where we offer a solution to all of your etiquette dilemmas. I am your etiquette educator, broadcasting to you from the Great Windy City of Chicago, Chi Town. We like to call it, we are the best in the Midwest and Victoria School of Etiquette. We are happy to have you be a part of our platform on this afternoon. So this is not our usual broadcasting time, but I'm here at this time nonetheless, right? Sometimes things don't always go the way we plan them to, but seizing the moment and making the best of it is uh, making it count is one of the best things that we can do. <clears throat> I need to readjust a little bit more here. So anyway, we are here this afternoon and I want you to do the same as I always ask you to. Please tag a neighbor, tag a friend, tag someone and uh, come on in, come on in for our midday broadcast on today. It is Wednesday. So it is What About Wednesdays segment. This segment is What About Wednesdays. I want to thank you for those of you that are watching me live. And for those of you that will catch the replay, thank you so very much. Because you can spend your time doing something else. But you have chosen to be here and be a part of our platform on this afternoon. Please like and share across your various social media platforms. I appreciate that. Um, and for my YouTube viewers that will be watching later, you'll be able to access this show later on today as I will post it up this afternoon after the broadcast ends. Um, if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so. Go on over to YouTube. It's um, The channel is by the same name as this show, Victoria School of Etiquette. That way you have access to all of our video material right at your fingertips and at your convenience. So um we're going to jump into our text on this afternoon this one is entitled how do you assess your inner worth today is what about wednesdays and so on this episode of what about wednesdays we're going to talk about your personal worth your personal value, that of your inner man. This one is not based on your monetary worth or net worth, but we are talking about the value of your own inner person. How do you assess it? How do you rate it? This is the kind of question that you hear asked when you are um, purchasing insurance, and, you know, they ask you how much insurance you want to take out. You want to take out $100,000, $300,000. You want to take out half a million, a million. And so whatever it is, they then always ask you at the end of it, what is your personal worth? What do you think that you are worth at this moment? Or what will be your worth at the time of your demise? Now, you know, in the natural sense, when we're talking about your personal worth, it is based on your natural assets, your home, the properties that you own, businesses, um, <clears throat> partnerships that you might have with other individuals in a monetary sense. How many cars do you have? You have boats, you know, um, all of that. Um, your investments is based upon all of that information. But that's not what we're talking about. And that information, all of that, when you're looking at your financial picture, it could come up to be hundreds of thousands of dollars. It could come up to be millions of dollars. Uh, we're talking about the great millionaires, you know, of, um, of today. All of this is based on what they own and the value of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Should they even sell it? Should they put it on the marketplace? How much are you worth? And so they assess that on the things that they own. But today we are talking about intangible items. Intangible items. It's not based on what you physically own. But it is based on your own self-esteem. It is based on your own inner knowing of who you are and the value you have in society today. And guess what? It doesn't really have to be recognized by others. When we're talking about personal wealth, people recognize the value of people 
based on their personal worth. You can look it up and see how much a person is worth on today. You can um, look up, um, oh my gosh, what is his name? <laughs> Guy that owns Facebook. You can look it up and see how much his net worth is, how much his personal wealth is. You know, All of the rich and the famous and what have you, you can look it up and see. But how do you look up yours? You look up your own personal worth. That's in your inner man. That has nothing to do with the tangible things that you own in the marketplace. It has nothing to do with your home, your car, how much money you have in the bank. But is your spiritual, is your natural self-esteem bank, is it full? Your spiritual self-esteem bank, is it full? Your evaluation of yourself, your evaluation, is it full? Is it low? Is it empty? How do you assess how much your inner worth is? Is based on how much you think about yourself, what you think about yourself. When you know your own worth and when you know your own value, <clears throat> Excuse me. You're not so quick to be intimidated by what someone else might attach to you. And they say, oh, well, Lady Victoria, you know, she doesn't own this. She doesn't own that. She doesn't own a mansion. You know, um, you know, she drives a regular everyday car, you know, or she drives a Ford or she drives a Nissan or whatever it is. People look at things externally outside of yourself and then they place a value on that belonging. And then that's how they begin to value you. But what do you say? Because that's what matters. It matters what you say, not what the other person says. So it's not their value system that's important to you. It's not their value system of you that determines your self-worth or your inner worth. But it's the thoughts that you think that you frame about you. This is the value system for how much you're worth and how much you think about yourself. Because, listen... If this is your tank, okay, this is your tank, right? This is it. It's framed right here. It's framed between your ears. This is where it is. And so if you don't assign a worthiness value to the thoughts that you think about yourself, your inner worth is going to be very low. It's going to be very, very low. So... When you attach value to your thoughts, to your actions, to your doings, to your being, you being just who you are, you attach the value to that. Someone could walk up to me and say, well, you know what? I really don't think that you, uh, I really don't value you that much because you don't say or do things that, um, you know, that help to promote my thoughts of uh, value concerning you. You don't do or say things that make me think that you're very valuable. Well, maybe what I have to offer may not be your cup of tea, but that does not mean that it's not valuable. And if it's not valuable to you, it most certainly is valuable to someone else. And if it isn't, it's valuable to me. And that's what you have to stand on. You have to stand on knowing your purpose and knowing your value and knowing that another person cannot assign that to you. People do it all the time, but you don't have to receive it. And you shouldn't if it doesn't align with the value that you have already set forth for yourself. It's what about Wednesdays on today. And we're talking about inner worth and inner, inner value, <clears throat> how you assess it. It's not based on what other people think or it's not based on what other people say. It's not based on um, how other people perceive you. You can't receive that if it's negative. You shouldn't receive it if it's negative. Now, on the flip side of that, what if it is negative and you buy into it? Then you just lower your own self-value. You lower your own worthiness. Worthiness is coming into a place of knowing and valuing your own life, your own system of how you live, your own person, your own inner being. That's what it's based on. It's not based on the thoughts of others. 
is not based on the words of others. It can have an impact on your life, but you should not let that be the credentialing system that you use to set worthiness in your own life. I should have I should have called this show uh, Word Word Worthy Wednesday on today. So if you're having a problem um, realizing what your value and what your worth is, then you need to do a mental reset because guess what? Everything starts in the mind. That's where it begins. It begins up here in the mind. And so if you think that you aren't worthy, guess what? You won't be. You won't have any other choice other than to exercise those thoughts publicly, exercise those feelings publicly. That's how it plays out. So when you think poorly about yourself, your actions concerning yourself are going to be of a poor grade. Right? When you think positive about yourself, you feel better about yourself, then your actions will display that. Your behaviors will display that. You think differently. You feel differently. You express yourself differently. When you're sad and when you're depressed, you know, you know, you know you're sluggish, you're dragging, you're lagging, you know, you just can't get it together. You always have a frown on your face. You look like you're mad at the world and all of that. It is all because of sometimes how you feel about yourself and you don't know how to get yourself out of that place that you now become rooted in because it has become an uh, valuation system for how you operate and how you show up in life, how you show up in society, how you show up in the world. And so if that's how you always present yourself, other people have no other perception of you other than that that you are presenting. So if you want people to change how they think about you, it begins with you. You first change your mind. Good afternoon. You first change your mind about how you think about you. And how you think about you is going to become a public display, right, of what that is. You know, your step is lighter. Your tone is lighter. You can see the joy and the happiness on your face. You can see that you're pleased. People can see that. That you must be satisfied with yourself. You know, he or she must feel good about herself. They see how you treat you. You know, if you show up to work, if you show up to work and your wardrobe has not been prepared, your clothes are dingy, you know, you can see all the food stains on your clothes. You show up, you know, in a head scarf, not a head wrap that's decorative, that is considered, right, an accessory. It is considered a compliment to your wardrobe, but you show up with a head rag on, you know, you haven't brushed your teeth, you know, you got on some old shoes that you wear around the house that you generally never wear in public. People are going to know that you do not value yourself. You do not value your outer appearance. It shows by the way you look. Your outer appearance shows by the way you speak about yourself. Right? Worthy word Wednesday on today. So how you think and how you feel shows up publicly. Even when you think it don't, it doesn't. Even when you think that you're hiding it, you feel bad about yourself, but you're hiding it from the public. People can eventually pick up on the vibe that you're giving off, that you're not valuable, that you're not worthy. You know, when you don't think that you're worthy of a good life, you don't think that you're worthy of love, you don't think that you're worthy of a raise on your job, you don't think that you're worthy of a better position, you don't think that you're worthy to pursue your dreams, you think it's too late, it costs too much, it doesn't cost enough. All of those things that you think about yourself show up in the public realm. And so reassess how you think about yourself, and that too will show up. When you show up put together, you show up striving, people can see that you're working toward a goal. Not that you're doing all of this for public show. You're not doing it for public show. You're doing it to achieve the things that you've set forth in your life, to achieve your goals, to complete your plan, to complete your vision. It's something that you're always working on. It's something that you're always working toward. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining. Something that you're always working toward. And something that you are using to advance yourself from where you are to where you're going. Worthiness begins with 
you. So when you assess your own worth, it is based on self-pride. It is based on value of self. It is based on appreciation of your own efforts. It is based on the language that you use, the love language, good afternoon, the love language that you speak to yourself. We are so, uh, what is the word? We're, we're, we're so conditioned to be people pleasers, okay? But you have to put yourself first. You have to be a people pleaser to self first. You have to be happy with yourself first before you can adequately think about pleasing somebody else. Because no value to yourself, no value that's attached to you rubs off on your efforts to other people. And people can see and they can feel that you are not genuine. That you are not genuine. And people don't want things that are half done. You know, they want the fullness of who you are. They want the fullness of your effort. They want the fullness of your love. People want reciprocity when it's good, right? So if you can't show love to self, you being able to show love to someone else is going to be an issue. It's not going to show up as genuine and authentic. It's because you haven't assigned a good value to yourself. You tell yourself that you're nothing. When you tell yourself that you're not going to advance, well, I guess I'm just going to be in this position for the rest of my life. It's just my lot in life. This is what it is, and this is all there is to it. When you tell yourself that, the universe is going to give you just that back. Learn to reframe your words. Learn to reframe your thinking that you assign a value system to yourself that's equitable to where you're going in life. You have courage. You're lacking. You need to be like the cowardly lion that didn't have any courage, so he had to go to the whiz and get him to, you know, pour him up some courage and drink it. If that's what you have to do, yes, then do it. By all means, whatever it takes for you to love and appreciate you, then do that. And it sometimes means that we have to lose people. Best friends, people that you've been knowing for 20, 30, 40 years. Sometimes we have to make a change. Sometimes we have to cut things off and cut people off so that you can live, so that you can shine. And again, not that you're doing it for other people. You're doing it for you. You're doing it so that you can be the best you that you could possibly be. So if you have to lose some friends, yes, then lose them. Will it hurt? Yes. Will you cry over it? Yes. Will you sometimes think and wonder if you made the right choice? Yes. But if it no longer serves you, you need to release it. Because then it becomes baggage. It becomes a bag of bones that you are carrying around that serve no purpose whatsoever other than to weigh and pull you down. To keep you from accelerating to your best place. To keep you from growing and advancing in your creative flow. To keep you from growing and advancing in the truth about you to keep you from growing and advancing in your gifts and your talents and your skills and your being, your being you, just being. You know, one of my uh, mentors used to always say, I think it's a Chinese proverb that he who chases, uh, I don't know, who who chases nine rabbits or who, who he who chases many rabbits catches none. So, if you're trying to pin a value to yourself based on what Joe Blow said and what Mary Lou said and what Felicia said and what this person said and that person said based on what your boss said, based on what your next door neighbor said, based on what they told you about you, guess what? You're not going to get anywhere because it does not lie with them. We teach people what to say about us. We teach people how to treat us. 
by example, by the way we treat ourselves. And if someone speaks to us in a demeaning and a degrading and a derogatory way, and we just let it go, and we don't correct them, we don't bring them to the carpet, guess what? They think they can talk to you that way anytime. And they most likely will do it again because they got away with it once before. And they figure they can get away with it again. Where's your courage? Where is your courage? The courage to stand up for yourself. Good afternoon. The courage to speak up for yourself. The courage to stand on your principles and walk them out in life every day because it is an everyday exercise that we show up for and that we carry out every single day. You're not proving it to other people. You're proving it to you that you can do it, ma'am. Sir, you have the ability to do it. You have the building blocks within you to make you be you, a worthy person, a person that's worthy of more, a person that's worthy of living their best life, the good life, a person that's worthy of knowing that they deserve it. You deserve it. The creator wants nothing more for you than the best. He wants nothing less than the best for you. And if he who made you and created you wants that for you, he gives you the tools, the building blocks. He gives you all the materials that you need to achieve that. He gives you all the materials that you need to bring that in fruition. And he gives you a timeline long enough on your life for you to achieve that. Now, some of us are late bloomers and we all grow and develop at different paces. But whatever your timeline is, you have enough time to achieve it. You have enough time to achieve it. You have enough time to grow into it. You know, when our children are growing up, they grow at different paces, right? We all have um, the same criteria, right? <clears throat> so we all have the capability to do so. And we all have the same stages in our lives. We come in life, we come into this world as an infant, okay? We go from infanthood to being toddlers. We go from toddlers to being preschool. We go from preschool to being in elementary or grade school. We go from grade school to being in middle school, to being in high school, to being in college, you know, to getting your bachelor's, your master's, your PhD, whatever it is. We all have that in the natural sense. Guess what? We all have that in our spiritual sense too. We all have those stages in our lives and you grow from one to the other you've never seen a 30 year old infant <laughs> you've never seen a 30 year old infant right a 30 year old that's still wearing diapers that's crawling around that's eating baby food not in the physical sense and i'm talking about you know regular normal lifestyle. I'm not talking about people that have uh, various uh, physical or um, other disabilities. I'm not making reference to them at all, but I just mean in everyday life. You know, you grow from infanthood, from infancy to the next level, preschool, right? And so in our growth and self-development of our each individual persons, we go through those different levels of growth. And as we're going through of them, you should gain a better sense of confidence, a better sense of value, and a better sense of self-worth at each level because you've completed one stage. And when you complete that stage, there's no reason for you to stay there because stage one no longer serves you. You're now ready for stage two. So you go, go to stage two and you grow and develop within the parameters of that stage. Sometimes in grammar school, when people, when, you know, when uh, I was growing up, they don't do it so much today anymore in the public school system. But sometimes uh, various students exceeded their grade level and they would be given a double instead of going from the third grade to the fourth grade. 
excuse me, they might have gone from the third grade to the fifth grade because they exceeded everything across the board on the third grade level. So that was reading, math, science, history, social studies, whatever it was. They exceeded that level. They tapped out of that level and they were able to go to the next level. So how quickly you grow, how quickly we advance in the valuation, the value of yourself is totally up to you. It is totally up to you. But you have to remember this also. The race is not given to the swift or to the strong, but to he that can endure till the end. So your growth pattern might be completely different than mine. My growth pattern might be completely different than yours. But the, the thing is, is that you're growing. You're growing and graduating. Good afternoon. You're growing and graduating. Don't stay at the same level. When you master one level, you go to the next level. Because what is behind you does not serve you as well as what is, is before you. What be, what's before you should be greater than that that you left behind. So what you're leaving behind is not a bad thing because you're going on to bigger, better, greater. Right? So this is how we begin to value ourselves even. Sometimes we don't know how to because for much of our lives we've been told negative things. We've been told things that are not positive. We've been fed a whole bunch of garbage. We've been, you know, drink the bad Kool-Aid. So you have to come out of the mindset, that way of thinking. And so it takes practice to do that. And that's what I'm referring to about reframing your thoughts and reframing your mind and reframing your actions and your reactions in life. So you reframe your person. I remember um, somebody told me years ago, um, I, I just began to change the way I dress. I began to change the way um, my look, my hair and everything. And somebody walked up to me one day and said, you know what? You reinvented yourself. And I love the way you look. You know, I love the way you look. I love what you're doing with yourself. So when I talked about earlier that's what's on the inside of you is reflected on the outside of you, I just didn't like the way I looked. I didn't like the, the style of dress that I wore. I didn't like the way it made me look. And so I decided to change it to something that I thought was more befitting to me and my personality. And so it got noticed. It got noticed by others. It's not about self-promotion, but it is about glowing and growing. So how do you assess your inner work? What tools are you using to measure that? And is it suiting and befitting for you? Think about it on today. This is What About Wednesdays and we were talking about your inner worth and your inner value. If I were going to use a word today, my word today would be courage as related to inner worth. Do you have the courage, good afternoon, to take the first step in reassessing the value of yourself, especially if you think it's not positive? It doesn't matter if I think it's positive or not. If you think it's not positive, then you need to take a step of courage and revalue yourself. Reframe your look into your inner man and be honest and be true with yourself. If this, hi Janet, if, is this the person that you truly want to be? Are you walking in the truth of who you think you are or are you walking in the words that someone else fed you and you took it on as your truth? And it might not be so. That might not be the case. And if it isn't, it's up to you to change it. Nobody can change it. I can encourage you all day long. I can give you uh, help. I can give you tools. I can say, hey, read this book. Read this scripture. This is what the Bible says about who you are. And this is a good author that talks about positivity, you know, and inner being, your, the value of your inner being, your soul man. I can direct you. But once you get to that trial, I can't make you drink. I can help you get there. And others can help you get there, but it's up to you to do the work. 
this is how you come out on top and this is how you come out a valued person in your own eyes you're proud of yourself once you have accomplished that you know you set a goal for yourself and you go out and you do it you say that hey i want to buy a car but i don't want a car note so i'm going to save up and i'm going to get the car that i want and when you walk onto the lot and you write them that check and you drive away with the vehicle knowing that you made your payment in full you're proud of yourself when you do that right you want to buy a house and you know what you want to put down a certain amount of money because you want your you want your mortgage to be at a certain place you don't want to pay more than seven hundred dollars eight hundred dollars you don't want to pay more than a thousand dollars fifteen hundred dollars whatever it is that you have decided when you do it you're proud of yourself and this is the same when you're working on your own inner man when you're working on your own inner being your inner woman there's no gender in god right so when you're working on yourself and you accomplish those things where you have a higher self-esteem value your self-esteem tank is full the value of yourself is full your thoughts about yourself they're full they're positive and that's exuded in the public life that you live out and walk out every single day so on today what about wednesdays like i said my word worthy word for wednesday on today is courage have the courage to step out have the courage to step out. Have the courage to take the first step towards being who you really want to be. And it's not based on some, someone else's value system of you, but it's based on the value system that you have of yourself. And if you need to change how you think about yourself, then do so. Begin to speak positive words to yourself. Find some scriptures that align with the purpose that you feel that is deposited within you and pursue it with all of your passion. Go after it with everything that you have within you. The Holy Spirit is there to lead you, to guide you, to direct you into the place that you want to be, that God wants you to be. You know, and pray about it. I'm always going to say that. Pray about it. And when you're done praying, I said the other day, when you're done praying, wait. Wait for the answer. You put the question out there, God has the answer. He's going to give it to you. But sometimes you have to sit and wait. Sometimes it's not always immediate. It's not tomorrow. It might be next week. But get up and move. Movement only happens when you move. The flow only goes when you walk in the flow. So uh, I sound like I'm being repetitive now. I'm saying the same thing over and over again. But this is my What About Wednesdays segment. And so I wanted to talk about self-value and worth. And the word for today is courage. Have the courage to show up for yourself a fight for yourself, to be yourself. Once again, I'm Lady Victoria with Victoria School of Etiquette. Thank you so much for joining our platform on this afternoon. I usually come on in the morning, but I couldn't this morning, so here I am this afternoon. Thank you for liking and sharing across your various social media platforms. And if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel by the same name, Victoria School of Etiquette, please go on over and subscribe um, to the channel. That way you have access to all of our video material right at your fingertips whenever you need it. So thank you so much for being here on this afternoon. Lady Victoria signing off for now, and we'll chat again another time. Bye for now. Thank you. Oh, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comment section, and after the video ends, I will respond to them. Thank you, guys.